Hello, I'm Keith Barker. If you're just joining this playlist, welcome, welcome. In this video, we're going to walk through the configuration of static default routes, plural, on the Palo Alto firewall. So in our journey, we are right here. Also, if you're just jumping into this set of videos for the first time, in the description, there's a link for the full playlist so you can pick up any of these sets of videos you want in any order you need. So in our previous video, we set up our zones, the inside and outside. We configured these three interfaces as layer three interfaces associated with those zones. And now we're going to train the Palo Alto firewall to use default routes. So to do that, we're going to create two static default routes. We'll have one that says the default route should go through service provider A. And let's go ahead and use an AD, administrative distance of 10, with a metric of 10. And we'll also set up a static default route going through service provider B. But for that one, let's use an AD of 20 and a metric of 20. Now on the Palo Alto firewall, there's options to do equal cost multipathing. However, here, what I want to do with these metrics and these ADs is I want the firewall to primarily use the path through ISP A. If it's up and available and good, it'll use it all the time. And in the event that that route is no longer available, then it will fall back to using service provider B. And that's the benefit of using a better AD and a better metric here on the primary path than on the alternate path through ISP B. So for ISP A, the next hop is going to be 23.1.2.1. And for ISP B, the next hop is 24.1.2.1. And before we implement the default routes, let's do a quick show routing route and press enter. And that shows us our existing routing table. So currently we do not have a default route, but we're about to change that. So back at Firewall 19, to configure the routing, we're going to click on the network tab up on top. And on the left, we're going to click on virtual routers. So we have one virtual router. It is name default, but we can go ahead and change that if we want. So I'm going to rename this to our virtual router. And anywhere that's referenced, that name will automatically update as well. And what we want to do for our virtual router here is we want to create a couple of static routes. So on the left, we'll click on static routes. And then we'll go down here and we'll click right here on add. And let's call this one default route via ISP A, like that. And the syntax for default route is 0000. zero, zero, zero slash zero for an IPv4 default route. And the interface we want to use is our Ethernet 1 slash 4. So that's the interface that's connecting up to service provider A's network. And the next hop for service provider A for that default route is 23.1.2.1. And then for the administrative distance, we'll set that at 10 and the metric of 10 for this primary route. And let's click on OK. All right, so there's one default route. Let's click on Add. And let's add the default route going through service provider B. So we'll call this default via ISPB. The default route syntax is going to be the same, 0000 slash 0. And the interface we're going to be using is interface 1 slash 5 for this route, for this default route. And the next hop for service provider B is 24.1.2.1. And then we want to artificially raise the AD to 20 and the metric to 20 and click on OK. So here are two default routes. So we'll click on OK. And then we'll go ahead and move those changes from the candidate configuration over to the running config by doing a commit. So that is on its way. I'll let that finish in the background. And let's take a look at our topology. So once that commit is complete, we should have a single default route in the routing table that's using ISP A. And we should also be able to reach the internet over the data plane interface. So we should be able to ping, for example, 8.8.8.8 or some other internet resource, sourcing it from this interface 1 slash 4 with the IP address of 23.1.2.19. Again, just as a heads up, I've got another layer of NAT here in my home network before going out to the public internet, and that's what's allowing the full connectivity out. Because somebody out on the internet really owns this address space, and I'm just using it here in my lab environment. So it's been about a minute. Let's go back to the firewall, and let's test our connectivity with our default route. So back at the CLI, one way of verifying the commit's done is by doing a show routing route again, and there are our default routes. So this one right here, the top one, it has an A next to it for the flags. That means it's an active route. It's actually being used as part of the forwarding information base. And then we have this static route without the A, and that's because it had a worse or higher administrative distance, and it didn't make it into the routing table. As long as this primary route through service provider A is here, the other route going through service provider B won't be used. So we'll do a ping, and let's source it from 23.1.2.19, going to host 8888. And it says can't assign requested address. That's because I failed to put a 2 there in front of it. So it's 23.1.2.19. Press enter. And that is working great. So we'll do a control C. And another way of testing would be right here from the web interface. We could click on device. And on the left, we could go over to troubleshooting, which is right here. So we'll click on troubleshooting. And then for the test configuration, we could say we want to do a ping. So we'll click on ping. 
And then here we can specify the source, so 23.1.2.19, and the destination is 8.8.8.8, .8 and then we'll click on Execute, and that will show us the results of that ping. So here are the results, and it was successful. So in the test configuration, it gives a graphical user interface to initiate effectively that same ping request we did at the command line. So let's take inventory. In the playlist, we've done a factory reset and assigned an IP address for the management interface, as well as the default gateway. We configured our zones and layer three interfaces. And in this video, we configured our static default routes on the firewall. Now you're thinking, whoa, 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 when did you do the first two? <laughs> There's a playlist that has all of these videos. And the link for that playlist is in the description of this video. So if you wanna click on that link, it'll give you easy access to this entire playlist and all these videos right here on YouTube. So we are up to this point. Now, if we bring up a client on this network, this client needs to know, oh, what is the IP addressing space I'm supposed to use? And what's my default gateway? And who's the DNS server I should use? And all that good stuff. And in order to easily hand that information out to lots of clients, we are gonna to wanna to use DHCP services. And fortunately, we can configure our firewall to act as a DHCP server when needed to provide that information. And the configuration of a DHCP server on the firewall is exactly what you and I get to do in the next video as part of this playlist. So if you have a few more minutes, I'll see you there in just a moment.